Welcome back to Tie Talk Web. Let's get into it. Uh, I saw a cool story the other day about uh, why 12 could be a magic number for Alabama's tight ends. As we know, O.J. Howard was probably missing in action last year. He was either in the witness protection program or he was in a Where's Waldo book. We don't know. But uh, if you kind of look at how Brian Debo did things at the Patriots, it could pan out pretty good for us. Um, last week, um, uh, you know, Alabama's head coach uh, Tuesday described an uh, offensive personnel grouping. Uh, he uh, described it as one running back with two tight ends. Um, the Crystal Tide lined up in this package 30% of the time offensively uh, snaps last season, but could be featured more prominently in 2017. Um, when asked about it, he said, maybe Saban said, cool, you know, I think it's a situational thing. We look at a lot more plays around here. We could spread people out because that's kind of what we do now, is what he said. He was not non-committal in his response to that, but uh, if you kind of case in point, if you look at what Brian Dable did with the New England Patriots and what they did, um, that's how they've attacked people the last decade, pretty much, with athletic tight ends, you know, with Gronkowski and even their backups. You know, they've had a lot of good ones in there. So um, it's a 12 personnel. It's offered flexibility, busting up eight-man fronts out of a standard ace formation while at the same time giving the Patriots the ability to split Rob Gronkowski or former NFL star Aaron Hernandez wide because they were fast, they were big. Um, there's one guy called Irv Smith on Alabama's team. He's underrated. I'm telling you, this guy's going to be big. Also, uh, Hennigas and uh, Tennyson. Watch out for these three guys. They're big, they're fast, and they can catch anything that comes their way. I've seen them in practice and seen some clips of these guys, so watch out. Uh, Gronkowski and Hernandez were often quicker than most linebackers they faced, kind of like O.J. Howard. He was a nightmare. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot more of these formations. I think if we'd had more of those formations, that Georgia tight end that's a amazing, nada, would have actually won up at Alabama. But um, this is going to be a nightmare for opposing defensive coordinators coming up in the season, I think. Uh, so whether Alabama can replicate this or not, we don't know just yet. But, uh, you know, Lane Kiffin, the previous offensive coordinator, he favored 11-man personnel, one running back, one tight end with three wide receivers. So we'll just see. Um, Alabama was in alignment 64% of the time, according to Pro Football Focus, last year. Um the plays were mainly focused at O.J. Howard, and a lot of times he was getting covered because teams knew that after the 2015 season. Uh, he mainly did yeoman's work. He did a lot of blocking. He was great at that. But as we know, O.J. Howard is going to be amazing in the pros. He's got a Shannon Sharp type ability. Um, so he was more of a blocker, but I think uh, he blocked, according to this uh, story, 58% of the time. So most of the time he was not even out for catches. He was not even out there. So, um, he and other tight ends were targeted 70 times. Uh, the wide were uh, targeted 321 times. If that tells you anything about how we use tight ends, more, mainly blocking in the schemes that we had. Um, New England and quarterback Tom Brady looked for tight ends only 21.1% of the time during the 2016 regular season, and the Patriots ran 12 personnel on 15% of its plays. So, about 20%. Um, but they were very devastating in the way they went about it. <clears throat> Uh, when they asked uh, about his uh, the t well, current Alabama tight end about that, this is what his comments he said, I, and I quote, I don't think it's any secret that Debo loves tight ends uh, coming from New England, said rising junior Hale Hennigas. So I think that the aspect we're going to have a lot of great opportunities in the tight end room. I think you can see that on the horizon, some expanded tight end roles. You can tell he has an affinity towards tight ends because it was in his position at New England. So I think he enjoys working with us because I know he knows the challenges that tight ends have. You have been able to run. You have to be able to block. You have to be able to pass catch. And so it's a good point. Under Kiffin, he did quite a number one, a bit of the number one and number two, very little number three. In 336 snaps last season, he made three uh, receptions. So I think those numbers will definitely uh, increase. Uh, like I said earlier, watch out for this guy more. Uh, another guy named Moore, Miller Forstall. This guy can catch anything. I've seen him in two spring games. Amazing. Watch out for that cat. Um, he's also added 13 pounds to a six foot five frame. <clears throat> and he only caught two more passes than Hennigas last year. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, they asked him about uh, another a question, kind of like uh, what's to come. 
And Henny just says, you know, you grew up uh, playing tight in high school. So, of course, you watch guys like Gronkowski, Forstall said. But now it's like his coach is here. That's pretty cool. We all, <clears throat> we all have the film. We all get to watch it. That's a lot of the stuff uh, to study. So we know what that's coming in. Saban was kind of tipping his hand when his, his answer earlier. Um, speaking of using the package, he said, Saban said, some people do it more effectively than others. We've been able to do it more some degree around here when he uh, when we needed to. I think that's sort of a situational thing. We'll probably still use it at, the, at that. Whether it's short yardage or four minute type of thing. <clears throat> so he won't really commit to it and say anything, but I think it will be used a lot. Uh, another story I thought was cool. Uh, one, uh, why one OJ Howard like Alabama tight end could be the next big thing. Uh, basically, uh, it's uh, Miller Forrestal, I think is the next big thing in Alabama. Don't cut out Irv Smith just for his speed. Um, these guys are beasts. Like I said, I, I've seen Miller Forrestal play, and I don't know why he's not on the field, maybe just because he wasn't as fast as OJ. But the guy, a great route runner, and catches literally anything that comes his way. <clears throat> uh, even Saban uh, commented on Forrestal and said he played a lot last year, and he's really good. Like I said, uh, if you remember, the only touchdown drive that Alabama was able to mount against LSU last year in the big November game uh, Forrestal helped set it up uh, in motion with a 22-yard reception that carried the Crimson Tide out of the shadow of its own end zone, if you guys remember that. So this guy's a big guy. He's going to get used a lot. I think Brand Devil likes this guy, but they're keeping it quiet, like I said. But I also think that uh, Irv, Forrest, or Irv Smith is another guy that we're going to have to watch out for. Very, very good. <clears throat> Some cool practice quotes by Saban this week, um, or the end of last week. Uh, Saban said the quarterbacks didn't throw uh, any interception that Jalen Hurt performed better in the pocket and delivering play action passes i said watch out for this because he was going to do nothing but work on passing in the offseason so our offense may look different he's going to be playing a lot more in the pocket stop play he's not going to be looking to scramble i'm telling you look for that saban said he didn't get much movement up front when he discussed the running game saban also said running backs both scarborough josh jacobs and bj emmons didn't scrimmage they're dealing with some injuries not serious but they will come back saban said uh like i said this guy i said watch out for him as well Robert Foster, he was coming on strong before he got hurt, and then Calvin really took over for him two years ago and beasted it. Watch out for this guy. He's bigger and faster than Ridley, so this guy's going to have one hell of a season. I'll be very surprised if he doesn't. That's my dark horse for Alabama, uh, the Alabama receiving core. Uh, Saban also said pass protection is something the offensive line needs to improve on. He also reiterated the need to get movement up front. Well, that happens every year, every year. We do that every year trying to figure out a line. Um, there was a cool story about quarterback play, a bright spot during Alabama's first scrimmage. Um, so he said all the, the uh, quarterbacks did very good. He said that, uh, it appears that Hertz is really improving. A lot of the guys are even saying that. <clears throat> so, uh, he's doing great with the play acts and passes. He's reading defenses better last year. They didn't have him reading a lot of defenses. He was young. He was 18. He was trying to learn the system and did a great job for as young as he was. And some of the senior laden team carried him. Uh, when asked about it, I thought the transitional offense was pretty good about day bowl. Um, things were going, things we're doing, the carryover of things we've done from the past as well as the things, uh, we're going to do now. Saban said, I thought we were much more effective passing the football. A lot of big plays, a lot of explosive plays, throwing the ball, especially play action passes. Uh, this one story is pretty cool. Um, it says Alabama's depth during running back first scrimmage is amazing. Duh. Uh, there was a quote from Najee Harris. Uh, Saban said that Najee played a lot. Brian uh, Robinson played a lot, which is good for them, uh, which is great because we need those guys because last year we only had one big, big power back, and it showed late in the season. It kind of hurt us. Obviously, national championship game. I'm not going to beat that dead horse. That's for another podcast. But um, like I said, the newest member of the crowd backfield includes Bo Scarborough, Damon Harris, Josh Jacobs, and B.J. Emmons. So we got to remember that the new guys as well as the old guys, we're loaded at running back. I don't think anybody in the country has a backfield as loaded and as stacked as ours. So that's one area that we're not going to have to worry about. One note I thought was pretty cool, uh, I said that Trayvon Diggs was a really good receiver. He just hadn't been able to showcase his skills. He's a guy that played both ways in high school. They're trying him out at uh, defensive back right now. Um, so... And he played a lot. Of, he played wide receiver last year. They're trying to figure out where to put him because he's so fast and he's big. Uh, the tight end Minka Fitzpatrick, who started spring practice at cornerback, 
back at safety, which he plays perfectly, which he needs to stay there. And they had Diggs, uh, first-team cornerback, opposite Anthony Everett. Remember, Anthony Everett in spring was a barn burner speed. And uh, also Diggs is that way too. So with those two guys, I don't think we're losing a whole lot when we lose Humphrey in the upcoming draft. You got to remember, he's 6'2 and 195. Big boy. He can come up and play the run. He can play the hit. He can play the ball. Uh, Saban said they're pleased with the progress that he's making. So I look for him to make the full transition to defensive back. Uh, he worked at safety a little bit. He worked also at wide receiver. Last year, he had 11 catches, 88 yards, and a touchdown. Pretty good numbers, but, you know, he's still young, and there was other bigger receivers they were trying to get the ball to as well. So uh, when Saban said, one more quote, he's much more natural playing at corner when we played than when we tried to play him at safety. That's where he played in high school. That's a big big point there. Uh, he has good toughness. He's a good tackler, plays the ball well in the deep part of the field. He's done a great job of playing one man-to-man to man, ugh, man, to man covers. Excuse me. I don't know what we're going to do with him the rest of the spring. We'll probably decide something after the end of this when we look at the scrimmage film. Well, I can pretty much tell you we're loaded at receiver. we got big receivers coming in. He's going to stay defensive back, and I think he uh, either plays a lot of star position or he winds up starting in a lot of packages or just overall takes the job. Anyway, that's Tide Talk with I'll have another uh, podcast here probably in two or three days. So be looking for that. I'm out. Yeah.